and then I can send this to everybody. Anna, Ella said, would you be able to let her in? Sure, she's, she's, in, she's not in the waiting room, though. Oh, I'll let her know. I can't see her in the waiting room. She did come in. She said her her uh, her Wi-Fi is a little unstable. Mm. Oh, stiff neck. She's not in the uh, waiting room. OK, I'm going to start and as soon as I see her, I'll let her in. So if you have got uh, paper and pens, that would be good. If you've got your green book, brilliant. If you haven't, don't worry about it. Um, we've got what time is it now? We've got just under an hour and I'm going to go through as many of these. Oh, this is the same one. This is it. This is it. This, yes. OK, so this is. This is a photocopy, so I've definitely copied this because I've got a photocopy of it. So I'd like to go through if we've if we've finished in time. Um, we can I've got loads of questions. So the first question I've got is where is the pituitary gland? So I need you to join in. And uh, so I'm not going to give you I'm not going to give you the four answers. We're just going to go through answers. That's where it's a little bit quicker and a little, we can get a little bit more done. So pituitary, where is, we'll do it like a revision. So we do like where it is and what it is, something like that. So where is the pituitary gland? Anybody? Pituitary? There's Errol, Ella, Ella, Errol, Ella. Hi, Ella. I know she didn't. No, she didn't. Hiya. Oh, there you are. There you are. Yeah. Good. 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 So, pituitary gland is in the brain. If you remember, it's part of. It's just at the top of the brain stem. It's in the main part of the brain. So, it's in the cerebrum, in the main part of the brain. And if you remember, it is the master gland of the endocrine system. So it's the orchestrator. Do you remember that? I was doing demonstrating that the, the pituitary gland will instruct a lot of the other main endocrine glands to control the internal environment. So if you just write down pituitary, brain, I would put cerebrum in case they ask a question like, is it in the cerebrum? Is it in the cerebellum? Is it in the brainstem? Do you know what I mean? So it's sort of good to have like bullet pointing, but not too much information, just so that you know it's in the main part of the brain. It's the uh, master gland of the endocrine system and it controls all the secretion of hormones. OK, so where is the thyroid? Again, this is also endocrine system. Where is where do we find the thyroid gland? Anybody? Is it in like your throat? It is in the throat, Amber. Well done. It's in the throat and it controls metabolism. So just pop that down as well. It controls metabolism. Um, so I don't know if you've done your, your diseases and disorders. It's got here, what is herpes called? I don't know. I don't recall a question like that, but know that herpes is a virus. And I think they like you to know the difference sometimes between zoster and um, simplex, zoster, and that it's a virus. That's one question. So like I've said, when when um, I think I've told you, I have told you this before, but these are questions that students come down straight away and just go, they just go like, you know, what's herpes called or what's herpes or something like that. OK, uh, question for everybody, which you should all know about bile. And it is here's the question that you need to know the difference between where bile is produced and then where bile is stored. So let's talk about that. First of all, where is bile produced? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Where is bile produced? Liver. It is in the liver. Fantastic. And then where is it stored? Gallbladder. Correct. Fantastic. Amazing. 
and it's got here functions of the liver. So it might have a question of like, what is not a function of the liver? So I would, I would sort of get a really good grip on the liver because they like you to know it produces bile. They like you to know that it stores vitamins A, D, E and K. What else does it like you to know about the liver? Mm. I mean, there's a whole list. I'm just thinking of some of the questions in the past of like, you know, the combination. So you, the, 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 uh, in the book, the, the, the liver functions are huge. I mean, it's a really big old bad boy. It does amazing stuff. Um, but, you know, or, or it converts glucose into glycogen and back again. So it's a very good, um, it, it also, ah, the liver removes toxins. That's a good thing that the liver does. It's basically, it removes any sort of toxins from like drugs and alcohol and pharmaceutical medication. So it, 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 it removes that um, from the bloodstream. So it purifies the blood as well. So often we think of the kidneys as filtering blood, but it's actually the liver that purifies blood. And then it sends the blood to the kidneys and the kidneys take away any of the uh, protein residue out of the water compound. And this is real A&P, um, but it, the, the kidneys filter the water element of the blood. It takes the water aspect because we know that blood is actually made up of about 75, 80% water. And um, only a smallish percentage of like the red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, plasma proteins and all of that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to know it removes toxins. It's good to know it stores vitamin A, B, D, E, K. It, and it, um, it converts glycogen and it and it definitely produces bile. I hope you get that question. I really hope you get a liver and bile question and uh, and that you get it so that, you know, <laughs> you know, so, you you know, it's all been worthwhile. Pulmonary arteries. Yep. Yeah, so that question's um, come up. This, this is all from last year, by the way. Pulmonary arteries and veins. So it's, what do they carry? So it's good to know that the pulmonary, excuse me, the pulmonary artery is the one that's the exception because usually our arteries carry oxygenated blood and veins carry deoxygenated blood. And in the pulmonary, what does that word pulmonary mean? When we see the word pulmonary, do we know what that means? I hope that you're all just being shy that you know the answer. Because anything pulmonary is to do with the lungs. So pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein is the veins and the arteries that come back from the lungs into the heart. OK. Do you remember that? So the pulmonary artery takes deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. And then the pulmonary vein brings oxygenated blood back into the heart. And so they're, they're an exception because usually arteries carry oxygenated blood. Scoliosis, kyphosis, lordosis. So I've put all three of them down because I think that I think that scoliosis and kyphosis comes up quite a bit. Um, scoliosis, if you remember, is a lateral curvature or how do they how would they describe it? Because you need to know how they describe it. So make sure you learn your. Um, they call them postural deformities. I hate the way they call them postural deformities conditions. But um, scoliosis, they call it a sideways curve, OK? And a kyphosis is an exaggerated curvature of the cervical spine, they say, the cervical spine. 
It's a little sort of cervical and top thoracic. It's that hunchback, the kyphosis. And then the lordosis is an inward, exaggerated inward lumbar curve. OK. So oh, sorry for my yawning. Do you know what? I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning this morning thinking it was like time to wake up. Unusual. And then I went back to sleep and then I woke up again at sort of 10 to 6. So excuse my yawning. Kyphosis, scoliosis, lordosis. I would get your head around those. Um, plantar flexion, the action of plantar flexion. I don't know how they formed that question, but somebody's come down and said, they wanted to know what plantar flexion was or what the action I'll spell it. Plantar, P L A N T A R, and then flexion, F L E X I O N. That's going to be, I think that's going to be either in muscles, there it is right there. So it says plantar flexion. If I just show you here. That's plantar flexion. So plantar flexion is pointing your toes, basically. Plantar flexion and dorsiflexion is like flexing, where the dorsal aspect, that's flexing, you know, like pointy toes and flex point. And in ballet classes, I don't know if they still do good toes and naughty toes. That's so dated. Um, plantar dorsi. So they've asked that question about plantar flexion last year. And they've also asked about supination and pronation. So supination and pronation. Supination is face up. Pronation is face down. I think they ask. So supination can be that. That's supination and that's pronation. But also when the body is lying supine, it's lying face up. And when the body is lying prone, it's lying face down. So, um, yeah, so sometimes, you know, they might say start with start with your client lying prone or start. Well, my dogs might bark in a minute because Ryan's just come home. Start, start with your client supine and that's face up. A nice easy one next. Any questions, by the way, before I carry on? Might just pause in case the dogs shout. Teachers in with me is all right. Tease the pooch. Okay. Um, what do ligaments connect? Ligaments connect. Bone to bone. Correct. Awesome. Uh, what? What? When do you tell people? Oh, yeah. So they love that question. When do you tell people about confidentiality? So there was two. There's two questions to this. When do you tell people about salon policies? And when do you tell your clients about code of confidentiality? Do you remember those questions? Did they come up? And basically, the answer is. At the beginning. Yeah, at the beginning, exactly. So at the beginning of your session or consultation or uh, when, however they, they want, I don't know, what a question. Body types. Now, I've just put body types because the students have come down. I said they want to know about like body types and ectomorph and endomorph. So um, make sure you know your body types. Um. Oily skin, they've got a question on oily skin. Okay, so this is how it's come out. Oily skin, what oil, talc, purified, oily? Does that make sense to you at all? Because that would be part of Sally's uh, tuition. The, 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 it doesn't what, make sense to me. It doesn't. <laughs> Right, I think there's a question, and this was the talc question the other day, is that what medium perhaps would you use 
if your client has oily skin i need to see it does anybody know the answer i mean for me with oily skin for facials when i teach about facials and oily skin when someone's got oil well i don't know because it's got talc here so i don't know whether there's a question there whether it's a separate question but there's something about talc with oily skin i mean to me that just sounds awful oily skin and talc but I think in eye tech world, oh, it might. Oh, shit, I haven't got a pink book with me. Hang on, Wizard wants to come in. I haven't got a pink book. Maybe there's something in the pink book about it. Hang on. Anybody got a pink book? Oh, no, I have, got, I have got a pink book. I have got a pink book right here. Got one right here. Yeah. Hi, Monk. Hi, Funk. Is that your smiley chops? Hello, Funk. Let me just have a quick look. Sorry for. Let me just have a quick look. Just because this 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 question does come up. Uh, it's come up a couple of times. Hacking, beating, oils. We want oils. Unless someone's got this at their fingertips. This question. Oh, massage oils, oil, 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 powder. Yes, powder. Here it is, right, ladies. Powder is useful. Oops. Hang on. Second. Kate, I can't talk to you right now. I'm on a tutorial call with my students. I'll talk to you later. Powder is useful for oily skin, very hairy clients or clients who dislike the residue of oil and creams. So that question came up last year. So if you get a what would you use on oily skin? The answer is talc. Things and here, massage, I'll just while I'm here and we're doing this, let me just give you this info as well massage creams creams are good for small or delicate areas such as the face or on very dry skin they tend to be heavier and more oily than oils they're absorbed faster how much medium do i use roughly 20 to 25 mil so this is good. This is good. This is good because they might ask this. Veg massage oils, vegetable plant, not too thick, heavy. How do you apply it? Skin sensitivity. So I would I would have a look at that page. If you've got a pink book, have a little read through that. Just skim read it, but get get some of that nice info. But definitely that oily skin and talc comes up. Right. Towel technique. Towel technique. What I think a question might be sort of like, you know, what do you uncover? Like only like area and modesty of what area would you uncover? That sort of thing. Uh, they're asking how many pairs of nerves in the excuse me, in the coccyx. How many pairs of nerves in the coccyx? Is it 14? No, darling. One. Yes. Yes, you knew that, Macy, because you answered it right last time. <laughs> I'm sure you answered it right last time. So the 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 um, 712554 are the bones and the vertebrae. And then if you look at the peripheral nervous system, we know that there's 31 pairs of, of spinal nerves and 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And then they always ask how many pairs of coccyx or how many pairs of sacral. There's one pair of coccyx nerves. Okay, so just make, make a note of that. 
how many pairs of nerves and they, they've always only ever asked about the coccyx for some reason. I hope you get asked that question and it's one. Micturation comes up every year. Please make sure you know what that is. Anybody know what micturation is? Weeing. Wee wee. Good. And do we know what defecation is from the, from the other hole? Who? <laughs> Yeah, and they called it elimination. What is the function of defecation? And I think the answer was elimination. God bless iTech. I really hope you all pass, girls. I really do. And if you can try and remember the questions, let's uh, hook up maybe. What day are you doing it? Monday? Maybe Tuesday? Maybe if you fancy hooking up just to sort of splurge or Monday evening, maybe. Or not? Maybe I'll miss. Maybe I'll have to miss a year, unless you're willing to. Unless you just email me, I'd really appreciate it. You know that, if you remember. It's just it's one of those things that when you come down from the exam, you kind of remember, but you don't remember. So, but if you if you feel inclined to drop me a line at my Anna of Fire, and just even if it's just like brr, random, uh, let me know what comes up. OK, bones in the feet. I've got bones in the feet, metatarsals, tarsals, phalanges. So they want to know how many metatarsals you've got, how many tarsals you've got and how many phalanges you've got. Um, they very rarely, and this might be a gamble because there's plenty to learn, but they very rarely ask about the names of the bones of the tarsals. If anything, I know that the heel is called the calcaneus. And the front of where the foot attaches to the front of the tibia is the talus. Maybe you know that from pedicure anyway, like the cuneiforms, the vicula, maybe. It's never really come up, but I'd hate for it to come up and you didn't ever even look at it. But they do want to know bones of the feet, metatarsals, tarsals, phalanges. Effects after massage. That's interesting. Effects after massage. So that's going to be things like contractions. <coughs> Excuse me. Contractions. Effects and benefits of massage. Oh, right, there we go. Because, like, is it like after the massage, like when you can, like, sometimes I like, have a headache or like feel sick and stuff? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're called they're called contraactions. Contraindications are contraindications where it's not appropriate to to massage. Contraactions, like you say, is that you might get a headache. You might feel fluey, you might feel tired, you might feel nauseous, you might feel just one second, just one second, just one second, just one second, one second. laundry on the line. Um, so yeah, sometimes you can feel fluey, tired, nauseous, need to go micturation, defecation. Uh, you know, that should be under like uh, consultation treatments, using massage, massage. Anyway, you, you'll have that information in here somewhere like the benefits. They like you to have the, the, the effects and benefits like, you know, a bit of the benefits. Have a little mooch through um, the benefits of like on the skin and the benefits on the muscular system, the benefits of the circulatory and what moves contra 
Contraindications, yeah, contraindications are good. Consultation, you know that. Hello, wizard. Always beautiful. Posture, posture. So do have a look through all of this, ladies. There's some this great appropriate integral biology. Oh my God. How are you all feeling about it all? Nervous. It's okay to be a bit nervous, that's all right. It's okay to be a bit nervous, that's good. Nervous is also the same energy as excited. So if you can translate it into excitement in any possible way and have it as a possible, you know, what's possible. I kind of like exams in some way. It's almost like it's a good purging. It's sort of, you know, let's see what I know, because you probably know. I remember when I was revising for my Kundalini yoga exams, it was just like, I have no idea if I know this until somebody asks me, because at the moment it's just all in my head. And it's just, you know, until someone goes, what is this or what is that? And it's tricky when, you know, like this situation where it's like oral questioning um, because I'm putting you on the spot. But it might be when you're in front of four questions, you surprise yourself of how much you know you actually know. Let's carry on. What time is it? Yeah, let's carry on. Um, there's there's uh, data pre Protection Act, GDPR. They must have asked that, like, what is GDPR? And it's the Data Protection Act. Do you all know what the, do you know what the Data Protection Act is? Do you know what the is data... Is you protect information? Sorry, darling? Is that like where you protect personal information? Yes, correct, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's where you're, you're, yeah, you're not allowed to share people's private and personal information without their consent. Haemophilia. Do you know what haemophilia is? Or if someone was a haemophiliac, do we know what that is? Haemophilia. Haemophilia. Is it when your blood doesn't clot? Amazing, really good, absolutely. Yeah, that's perfect. And it'll be as simple as that. How do you spell that? It's H-A-E-M-A-P-H-E-L-I-A. -E so that, that thing, thing, that piece of paper that I gave you with all the pathology on it, you definitely want to go through that and make sure that you know some of the pathology. Pathology is like the conditions, the diseases and disorders. You really do need to go for that. If you haven't got that, you can access it from an old um, Microsoft 365 Outlook email. What else was I just going to say then? I was going to say something else about that. Um, oh, yes. Haemophilia. Whenever you see the word H-A- E M A like hema, that's blood, like hematomin, hematoma, hemogl hemoglobin, hemophilia is to do with the blood. Okay, right. How do you clean a couch? How do you clean a hi Gina? Oh. That's right. Are you, you alright? What do you need? Can't hear you. Uh, about twelve. Um, he, yeah. He, so, how do you clean? How do you clean a couch? Is it warm soap and water? Like, I think so. I think that's the answer. I think we've 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 had that question when we were doing our our hundred questions. It was warm soapy water. Yeah. Example of a short bone. 
example of a short bone. Short is bone. Phalanges? Mm, not phalanges, no. Is it, is it like tarsals um, and carpals? It is. It's tarsals and carpals. So the short bones are the cubed shaped bones in the wrists and the ankles. So your carpals and tarsals are short. The long bones are phalanges, even though phalanges are tiny. The structure of them is that they have a very long shaft with little ends. So, uh, so tibia, fibula, uh, radius, ulna, humerus, femur, carpals, I'm um, sorry, metacarpals, and phalanges are all long bones because they're used as levers. Okay, so long bones are used as levers, and even though they're tiny, they're still so you know they they can be really long, but they also can be very tiny, and they they act as levers. The short bones are quite protecting. Flat bones are flat bones. If you get a flat bone question, think flat bones, scapula, hip sternum ribs are flat and then irregular is the spine and sesamoid is your knees the patella okay what is sterilization now if I remember rightly, we did we we did talk about these. Sterilization was the what is it? The absence of bacteria and microorganisms. Do you remember that little question? Free from bacteria and microorganisms. A process of cleaning. Does that make sense? Come on, give me the give me the give me yeah. the line. What's the line? Has anybody got it in their notes? It was it was in the ones it was in the ones we did last week, wasn't it? You know the line anyway. It's you know the line. The process of making something free from bacteria and other living organisms. Spot on. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is it. Learn that line. The process of making something free from bacteria and microorganisms. OK. Um, what is the name of the vessel that carries oxygen from the lungs to the heart? I'm not going to tell you this. I'm going to wait for you. Oh, my shoulders. What is the what is the name of the vessel that carries oxygen from the lungs to the heart. Do you like my new piece of gua sha, stainless steel? Go on, what's the answer to that? Is it the pulmonary vein? It is the pulmonary vein, spot on. Very good. What is Flexion. God, they've asked loads of those questions about movements. What is flexion? The answer to that is bend or flex a limb inwards. That's their definition. Sometimes I know Gino was doing GCSE and they like to have the answer of reducing an angle to make it, they, their definition is reducing an angle smaller, but the, but the eye tech has got it here, bend or flex a limb inward. Um, function of the bicep femoris, oh my God, okay. Bicep femoris, is that the flex, flex hip extends bicep femoris? Let's have a look at you, where are you? Where are you, bicep femoris? Bicep femoris is part of the hamstrings. Semitendinosus, semimembranosus, biceps femoris. 
And the action is the flexes the knee and extends the hip. So do you know what? There's like a there's like a, a stock number of these that they answer. They don't do that. You don't need to know all of them. They ask like they ask this one, the biceps femoris. They like what else do they do? Just just learn some of the main ones like the. So biceps femoris flexes knee and extends the hip. Flexes knee and extends the hip. There was another one that they always asked. Terrace major or the scapula and anyway, deltoid maybe or, or um latissimus dorsi maybe. You know, I, I would I think trying to learn all of those at this point is is just insane. Hello. I think there's there's quite a, a huge job to learn all the actions of all the muscles at this point. But if anything, go with go with that bicep femoris for the minute. Definitely learn that. It's not the first time I've seen that. To be fair, uh, there was one about there was one like a lateral rotation, whatever a lateral rotation of the. A duct and medi to rotate, like terrace major and terrace minor. I think they've asked that. Something that laterally rotates the the upper arm. Anyway, you should know your muscles, and if you know, if you can, if you do get a question, if you know your muscles, which would be great to have an overview of muscles, then you can then you can do a process of elimination. When you're thinking about it, like you know, biceps femoris is in the hamstrings, and then you can just visually sort of go through that action um, and see if you can do a process of elimination. And like I've said to you before, if you really, really don't know and you're going for a guess, you're going to ask your intuition to tell you the answer. And I'm really serious about this. Is you ask your intuition, you say, tell me the answer. Is it A, B, C? And you look at it and you ask and you trust your intuition if you're guessing. Don't just guess like it dip. Ask your intuition because somewhere in your subconscious, it might have seen it. So process of elimination first. Read the questions properly because I think that that's you've got plenty of time. And again, that's don't do not mess up at a point by not reason, reading the question properly or by rushing it. So that's just a top tip. I mean, you know, I'm sure your teachers have been telling you that since GCSEs, but certainly for iTech, um, just read it, read it properly and then eliminate. Or if you know the answer, brilliant. And don't, you know, don't waste time. You've done lots of iTech before. What you don't want to do is start questioning yourself. And because once you start questioning yourself, you could spiral into a world of misery and you just go with like, yep, yeah, that feels right. It feels good. Yeah, I've got this. You know what I mean? So go with it. So um, how does lymph drain back to the blood supply? So this is a good question to know. How does lymph drain back to the blood supply? So do you remember that when we talked about the lymphatic system, it goes through the vessels through the nodes and then it goes up to the and I don't really know the, the lymph drains back to the blood supply through actually the subclavian vein I think it might be the answer might be the subclavian vein but anyway <clears throat> it goes up into the thoracic ducts first now I've seen the question before where are the thoracic ducts located and the answer to that is at the root of the neck okay so write that down the thoracic ducts are at the root of the neck and then they tip into the subclavian vein and then from the subclavian vein subclavian underclavicle vein it tips into 
the superior vena cava that then enters into the heart. And that's how lymph recycles itself. So the answer to that question is how does lymph drain black to the blood supply? For me, the answer would be the subclavian vein. OK, but don't forget that the, the thoracic ducts might be part of, of that lymphatic question. Any questions on that? OK. But do review our, our lesson on the lymphatics. Um, they're not going to ask many. They're going to ask one or two questions. But have a quick review. I would have a little review on the specialised cells inside a lymphatic node, like your phagocytes, leukocytes and lymphocytes. I would have a little review of that. They love this question. What does what is aseptic? What is aseptic? You've had this question before, I think, with, with the 100 questions, not, not with Laura's 100 questions. What is aseptic? And if you remember, do you remember last time we, we thought we, we, we remembered that if you think of coronavirus and how we're going to have to be after COVID or during getting back to normal, I'm sure we talked about this. Aseptic. I think aseptic meaning aseptic is free from contamination caused by, by bacteria, viruses and microorganisms. Um, and so it's got to be surgically sterile. So it's a little bit like sterilization. Sterilization is a process where you make something aseptic. Are you OK with that? Can you can you Remember the definition again? Yes, yeah. it's free from. It's free from make. It, it's free from contamination. Free from contamination caused by harmful bacteria, viruses, and other microorganisms. So basically, it, however, they they put what is aseptic. They're going to give you multiple choice. But if you see that word aseptic, remember, this is like how everything's going to have to be with with COVID. It's going to have to be sterile, sterilized, no virus, no bacteria, no microorganisms, especially with the the COVID virus. We, we you know, we have to have everything sterilized. And, you know, when you start going into work places, Everything's going to have to be in between bleached and sterilised. And so the, the, the environment is going to be aseptic. OK, so that's going to be a, that's going to be a really good buzzword for you going forward as well. And, you know, when you get a job and they ask you, you know, what are your what's your opinions on how have you learnt anything about health and safety and having things COVID clean? You say, yeah, we're going to make the area aseptic and sterilised free from microorganisms and bacteria and viruses. OK. And I mean, then, you know, things like um, antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial sprays and solutions, you know, surgical spirit, alcohol. You know, you're going to have to just get your head around all of that. When, you, when you're going to go into work, because workplaces are going to be observing that. OK, we've got 10 more minutes. We've got one, two, three, four, five questions, and then I'll take any questions from you. They are liking, they're, they're, they're liking, they're wanting us to know uh, the functions and definition of a synapse, an axon, and a dendrite. So, you, I'll hand that over to you. I'll, I'm going to briefly tell you now, but I'm going to hand it over to you Please, to learn. Can you spell all those words? So the synapse, S Y N A P S E, synapse. Does anybody know what the synapse is? Is it the gap between each neuron? Correct, Amber. Fantastic. 
It's exactly that. It's like if you if you imagine passing the batons, like a relay race, it's that moment where you pass the baton. It's the gap where between the neurons they jump the information, the the information transmission jumps like a relay race from neuron to neuron, because the neurons are quite small and they go and and they they relay these. Um, these impulses, these um, positive and negative ion charges that convey neural impulses and the messages, uh, something's hot or cold or move or fast or, do you know what I mean? Those are from the brain to the body and the body to the brain. Do you remember that? Motor nerves and sensory nerves have a little review of that if they want to know what a motor nerve is and a sensory nerve. Um, the axon, A-X-O-N. Anybody know what the axon is at the top of your head? Top of the spine, isn't it? The first two. No, close. Very, very, very close. That's called the axis, Chloe. That, that is called the axis. Uh, the atlas and the axis and do you know what that question comes up as well the atlas while we're talking about it and then i'll go back to axon but the atlas and axis are the first two vertebrae in the cervical spine that connect the skull to the spine they've asked that question before well done for bringing that up chloe um the next question about the axon is when you've got the, the neuron, you've got the dendrite and the dendrites are like the transmitters and they conduct the nerve impulse and the message and the information into the cell body, into the nucleus. And then it travels along the axon length to the axon terminal where it jumps over the synapse. Let me show you a picture. You'll recognize this in a minute. There. So these are the dendrites at the top. These receive the information. It comes into the cell body and it goes, ah, oh, we're, we're touch or we're taste or we're smell or we're sight or we can see or we're movement. And here's the information. It's telling us to do that. The information travels along the axon length to the end feet, the little terminal, where it jumps to the next axon, uh, to the next dendrite. Let me find that picture. Yeah, they've got that there. So review those two pictures. Uh, that's how the that's how the, the impulse is conveyed. It's like a relay race. But they they they've asked you know the function and definitions of each of those last year. They've also asked about what is the function of an erythrocyte a leukocyte and a thrombocyte. Very quickly, erythrocytes, please. We've got three more questions. Erythrocytes. Red blood cells. Correct, yeah, good. Leukocytes. White blood cells. White. Yeah, good, Chloe. And uh, thrombocytes or platelets. What do they do? What do thrombocytes do? They clot. They do. They clot the blood. Thrombocytes, platelets, clot the blood. Leukocytes, white blood cells. What do they do? You know this one, Ella. I'm sure you've answered this question before. White blood cells. White blood cells. They fight infection. Correct. And red blood cells. What's the main function of the red blood cells, erythrocytes? They carry oxygen. Yeah, fantastic. Two questions left. Um, Nerves in how many nerves are in the peripheral nerves? So this is like how many spines and uh, how many spinal nerves in the peripheral nervous system? Spinal nerves. Mm. 
what was the word? What was the peripheral? How many spinal nerves in the peripheral nervous system? That's your brachial plexus, cervical plexus, sacral plexus. How many pairs of spinal nerves are there? I'm going to ask you both the cranial and the spinal. So you Is might it want to. There's 12 pairs of cranial, Macy. 12 pairs of cranial. And then now I'm asking for spinal. 31. Correct. Very good. Good. And finally, yeah, perfect timing. The nerves in the periphery, no, contraindications that restrict treatment. I'm going to hand that over to you. It's too long and we'll be here all day. Not all day, but we'll be here longer. Contraindications, know your contraindications that restrict treatment. Know your contraindications that is a total contraindication. Know the ones that you have to get medical help. And so you're going to reach into Sally's books and manuals and your pink book or Sally's notes about contraindications. OK, but they've asked about contraindications. I've got that star they, the, that restrict. Someone said um, name, name contraindications that restrict treatment. And then they've given you four possibilities of um, restricting treatment. So check up on those. OK. Good. Uh, any questions before I stop the recording? Any questions? This is the last opportunity. So I'm going to send you this recording so that you can look at it again if you wanted to review it. If you didn't make notes, you can review it. Did you get the links to the other ones, by the way? Did that work? Yeah. Great. Brilliant. So um, I'll um, I'll do the same with this. I'll upload it onto YouTube and send you that link. Um, other than that, I'm here. If you want to ask any any questions over the weekend, you can drop me a line. Send it to my personal address because I don't go onto the the Microsoft very often I sort of check my personal all the time so if you've got any questions on revision over the weekend please get in touch other than that Laura will be there on Monday for you um, I will be there next Monday now next week um, like I said Friday I'm teaching uh, uh, one of my courses in the school of fine tuning I'm teaching a course on Friday so I'm not going to be able to see you Friday um, I could do Thursday or Saturday because Laura won't be doing, Laura won't be, is Laura doing one next Thursday, do you know? I don't think so because our exam's on Monday, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so should we take next Thursday then rather than the weekend? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. I'll just check that's okay with Laura, that I'll take that slot. And we'll make it, we'll do um, 10 o'clock. I think 10 o'clock's fine. It just means I can get on with my day and you can get on with yours too. So 10 o'clock next Thursday to do Indian Head and Hot Stone. Okay. It might be a little over an hour if we're doing two subjects, but it won't be more than an hour and a half, I promise you. And then I'll record it and then you can review it over the weekend and we'll have it, we'll have nice, we'll have a little sort of, have a bit of fun with it. Anna. Yes. Um, on Sunday, do you think we'd have like just like a quick like like go over like questions like just before the exam on Monday? This Sunday. Yeah. Or is that? Are you, are you busy? Um, I can do Sunday. I can do maybe an hour. Yeah. Or... Just so like I, 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 I tell you what I will I tell you what I'm I will, I'll, what I will do is a Q and A. Okay. I won't I won't present anything. I'm just going to stop this recording. I won't.